evening. I'd like to thank all of you for being here this evening, for being so welcoming throughout the five weeks that I've been here. Am I on? I didn't think so. I know I turned it on, maybe it came off. I don't know. Who knows, right? It's on mute, so flip the. Oh, okay. It's on mute. That means I didn't say anything yet. There you go. Should be on the top. On the top. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> That'll help. There it is. Oh, look at that. Now I hear me. <laughs> now you have to suffer through it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put this back in my pocket. Get there. Good evening, once again. <laughs> there. Oh, look, now we have people here. Good. Uh, I want to thank you for welcoming me in these last five weeks during Lent. Uh, I'm not on your schedule anymore going forward. Not sure you know what the good Lord holds, but uh, see what we can do and how we can continue to care for you through all of us different messengers. Uh, Holy Week is coming up. That's what that means. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. You have your Palm Sunday service at 9 a.m. And then next week is Holy Week. So you have Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m., Good Friday at 7 p.m., and Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. So I hope you can all make it for those services here that you can continue to gather together to hear God's word and receive his gifts. And as one more announcement, Tom, if you'd like to come forward and maybe you guys can turn on the lectern mic for him so he can give you guys a good link. Yeah, I told him he had a good half hour. To, yeah, take him a good half hour for that, that announcement. So. All right. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone again that we're, we're still doing the Congregational call process survey, and that they're due on April Sunday, Easter Sunday. <laughs> so uh, we have like two weeks to complete them from when we started this last Sunday. So you can do it online, or you can uh, get a paper copy. They're out out there in the narthex. There's a, a pretty red box that you can leave your surveys in when you're done with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind everyone is. Um, to feel free also to add any written comments in addition to the survey. If you have any more detailed comments you'd like to make about our church, our congregation, what we do well, what we can improve, what we'd like to see in a new pastor. Um, you know, because the survey itself doesn't let you put a lot of detail in. It's mostly a multiple choice thing. So feel free if you want to add any comments to uh, write them down on the paper, seal them in it, and just put them in the box up there. So just wanted to remind everyone this process is still going on. And, Please uh, do your surveys and get them in. It's a very important part of the call process, and we really appreciate your call for that. Thank you. You still got like 27 minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those surveys are really helpful, even for the incoming pastor, not just the district, but the incoming pastor. Can look at those results, and he can get to know you a lot better before uh, even stepping foot in here and beginning to serve. And so, uh, when I came to a manual, they had one, and they. Uh, they handed that to me, and that kind of showed me a lot more about the church. It would have taken me many months, if not even years, to kind of learn all that myself. So I encourage you to do the survey and to have other people that you know that maybe even haven't been in church or that haven't done it, reach out. Just encourage them to also do that. It is very helpful for us and for you guys as a church. All right. So with all of that, let us begin as printed in our bulletin. We'll begin uh, with our invocation. Would you please rise? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And our opening hymn is, My Song is Love Unknown. We will sing the first three verses. I know I just had to stand with you. If you would like to sit, you may be seated at I'll leave that guy's up to you guys completely. <laughs>
begin with our call to worship taken from Psalm 130. Please note, P is for pastor, then there's men, women, and A is for all of us. So we will go through Psalm 130 as printed in the bulletin. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears It is too light a thing that you should 
be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The epistle reading tonight will sing, uh, sing the exiles first in the bulletin. Yep. Yes. And you looked at me and I nodded and you took that as a text and I said, no, that means a hymn. So, that's how you work out kings, isn't it? Yes. Let us sing.
Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess the faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Grace, mercy, and peace be on you, the one and only true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know if any of you are, but those people who've been born and bred down in the heart of Dixie, I'm sure you guys know they really have a vocabulary all their own, don't they? Like, it's not man, it's man. It's not a thing, but it's a thing. Never a fire, but it's a bar. Never Anyone, does anyone ever go to a dance? They go to a dance. And it's not oil business, it's all business. You know, if you're not raised down in the South, really all you gotta do is say one word, and that true Southerner will know. And they'll say, Y'all ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> it only takes one word. That's all it takes. It's true if you're like me, a Yankee down there in Dixie, they know me. But you know what? It only takes one word, and it's so true if you're the Lord's servant. See, in our text this evening, the servant says, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. A mouth like a sharp sword. It's similar to the mouth of the coming Davidic deliverer that Isaiah talked about in chapter 11. He described him as one who will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And this coming deliverer, is unlike the Persian king Cyrus. He waged war against Babylon according to the flesh, as scripture says. But this servant will employ weapons not of the flesh, but those that have divine power to destroy strongholds. In a world in which the rise and fall of nations appears to be determined not by prophetic pronouncements, but rather by imperial armies, now this word may seem like a feeble piece of equipment. But the prophet Isaiah in chapters 40 through 55, he highlights God's word. Isaiah begins 40 verse 8 by writing, grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. And he ends in chapter 55 verses 10 through 11, one of my favorites, says, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. From Isaiah's third servant song, where the servant is speaking, he writes, the Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. All of that to say, quite simply, when God speaks, things happen. You know that from the very beginning of Genesis, don't you? A single word, let there be light, there is light. But even for us, in this culture, even we understand that a single word is sometimes all it takes. You might be driving down the road, and you see this word that says, stop. You stop, don't you? You better. Or a parent might look at the dirty room of their child and say, clean. Or maybe of a husband looking at the clothes on the floor going, clean. Husbands, what do we do? We clean, don't we? A bill comes in that says, do. And if we have the money, we pay it now. 
in all these instances and so many more, it just takes the power of one word. Now the prophet Isaiah was writing in the 8th century B.C. And he's presenting the servant to those Israelites who were exiled in Babylon in the 6th century B.C., about 200 years later. It'd be like God giving me a word to speak to people in the year 2222. That's who he's writing to. And these people, these Israelites in Babylon that are exiled, well, their temple has been burned and demolished. Their king, Zedekiah, he had his eyes gouged out at Ribbah after witnessing the killing of his sons. The nation of Israel, their, or Judah, their entire way of living had come to the brutal end by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar through his captain, Nebuzaradan. These Israelite exiles truly only knew defeat. Their liturgy might be summarized in the words from Isaiah 40, verse 27. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Some of us might be too familiar with words like that in our own thinking. If you've ever been divorced by a spouse or abandoned by a parent, you might have echoed those words. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Or if you've ever been hurt so badly you couldn't even reach deep enough to describe the in intense pain you're feeling you've lived that nightmare. If you've ever fought horrifying demons from your past, you know this chaos. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Overcome by life in Babylon, the exiles turned to the fleeting, the temporary, those quick fixes that you and I are still apt to go after in our day and age. They were so bold as to say in Isaiah 56, verse 12, Come, let me get wine. Let us drink our fill of beer. See, in the agony of defeat, so often we get sucked into that which is shallow and superficial. It's cheap, dirty. Maybe we're looking for quick revenge and a spouse gets tangled up in a one-night stand. Students take shortcuts. They get caught cheating. Parents neglect children and pour everything into their careers. Whatever shortcut we try to find, whatever quick response we're looking for sometimes, we find ourselves there in the despair of the exiles. My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. To that enters Yahweh's servant. He says in our text, He made my mouth like a sharp sword. You know, just one word will set right what is so wrong with our lives. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, he's speaking to the disciple Philip. He's speaking about this same servant. He's reading from the scroll of Isaiah. And this Ethiopian eunuch says, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? And Philip tells him the good news about Jesus. Jesus is that servant in our text. The one who needs only one word to accomplish his father's mission, to bring order to a fallen and shattered world. Anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, Jesus is thrust into the wilderness to meet the enemy. We'd expect someone to meet the enemy with what? Sword, spear, nowadays guns and flames, right? But this servant, Jesus, goes to battle with a thunderous Degraptai. It's Greek. One word in Greek. Degraptai. It is written. It says it again and again as he battles Satan. Degraptai. <laughs> and then to bruised reeds and smoldering wigs like that man with leprosy that Jesus came in contact with, Jesus' word, word singular, was katharistatai. Again, one word in Greek, we retranslate it as be clean. One word, he's healed. Jesus rebuked the chaotic wind and those waves with one word, seopa, be quiet. And to the deaf and the mute man, Jesus cried out, ephatha, be opened. One word is all I ever took from Jesus. Luther put it this way in his wonderful hymn, The Mighty Fortress. 
to I Mort Lein Kind I Fallen, excuse my terrible German. What Luther wrote was one little word and fell. In. The centurion in Matthew chapter 8, verse 8, he gets it. He understood quite well. He says to Jesus, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And climactically, what we are working towards this Lent season, Jesus marshals just one word. Isaiah's third servant song sets the stage. Isaiah 50, verse 6, put it this way. He said, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Arrested, bound, tried, slapped, beaten, stripped, scourged, abandoned, spiked, forsaken. Jesus utters one more word to tell us that it is finished. And everything that the Old Testament had foreshadowed and foretold, had predicted and prefigured, everything the Old Testament promised is now complete. It's done. The tell us not. It's finished. The servant is crushed. The lamb is slain. The atonement is made. And the Passover is complete. The banquet now ready. From the cross, Jesus speaks just that one word. And he speaks one word descriptions for all of you. Forgiven. You are forgiven. Washed, cleansed, justified, loved. For us, that means he will speak order into our chaos. Hebrews 4.12, put it this way. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word connected with water, bread, wine, placed upon your foreheads, given into your mouths. It delivers restoration and healing. It gives you forgiveness. You have been bought in the blood, sealed in the sacraments, and you are abounding now in hope and joy. But that final restoration that we all await is yet to come. At his second coming, the, the servant, Jesus, He'll return as a rider on a white horse, we're told. His name will be called Faithful and True, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And on that day, the ultimate one-word victory will be uttered, and you and I will go home. John records it in Revelation 21, verse 6. Gagodon, it is done. And so to the student who holds defeated dreams, Jesus speaks. To the couple who's barren and they have fervent prayers, he speaks. To the Christian who daily fights with his flesh, only to lose time after time, the servant speaks. And to any person who's felt the sting of death, the power of the law, the torment of guilt, he speaks. And so we speak back to him, Lord, just say the word and we will be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing, Glory Be to Jesus. It's hymn number 433.
to help build up for your future and all the ministry that you're doing here at Pecatonica. Appreciate that as a member of the kingdom of God along with you as a brother in Christ. At this time, let us stand and go to the Lord in prayer as printed in our bulletin. Heavenly Father, like Isaiah, we delight in this promise. Lord, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the wonderful world counselor, my mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we give thanks that there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And Father, we are amazed that a little child shall be there. Empower us to delight in mustard seeds, five loaves and two fish, and a little children. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. But she on this day, we rejoice in our King Jesus, who travels to Jerusalem to take up a cross for us and for our salvation. Help us never to miss the sheer wonder and majesty and beauty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you merely need to just say the word, and we are healed, cleansed, forgiven, yours, now and forever. Lord, be with Gary King, Jim Anders, Doris Buzzer, Vic Beckaber, Sarah Binger, Joe Hamlock Sr., Ida Dirksen, Diane Hammond. Lord, we ask that you simply say a word and heal them. Give them your peace and your comforts. We ask all of this in the name of our suffering servant, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for thy ever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Abide with